Oh, this is in the cooler. This is in the white snack bin. Okay. Then snack. We can get one big group hug, can't we, Mr. Brown? <laughs> he likes that. Yay! Mr. Brown is requesting pictures along the way, huh? Can we get you some pictures? <laughs> Two things I want to accomplish from this trip. One, learn all we can about piglets or how to breed and raise piglets for our movie and course, Permaculture Pigs. We've stopped at this scenic overlook. Why not? The mountains are so beautiful. I gotta be. <laughs> much better. But I also want to take this time to be alone and spend some quality of time with this guy. And if that means slowing down a little bit, going and seeing the overlooks, then that's what we're going to do. You done? Yeah. You been there, done that? Yeah. Okay. You ready to go? Mm -hmm. We are there, J and L Farms, Virginia. This is gonna be good. We're gonna about to feed old fruit to the sow pigs. Let's go. We're trying to figure out this. Uh, what is this? The gator? gator. John Deere gator. Okay. You ready? I'm a neutral. I think I'm ready. You ready? Oh, I gotta put the brake down. No, that's right. Oh, yeah, you're right. All right, ready? Here we go. My sidekick assistant photographer today. Let's go. What'd you put in the tractor right there, Jordan? Um, so these are waste peaches that we are getting from a local packing shed. Um, so this is the ones that are bruised, blemished, not able to ship them out to a you know, retail grocery store. So instead of them being thrown away in the woods, we're feeding pigs with them. Nice. What's this? So this is peanut um, waste product. So this is more like a meal and dust, but it can be anything from uh, whole peanuts to hulled ones to honey roasted ones, garlic ones. We've had all different kinds. Um, this is just the waste stuff from a peanut pro processing facility that does peanut butter or you know, peanuts you'd buy at the do you, circus. Do you have to uh, buy this? Yeah, this we do pay for, um, but for what we're doing here with the fruit, this is real helpful to balance out their diet nutritionally. So fruit has a lot of sugars and starch, but almost no protein or fats. Um, whereas peanuts are very high in fat and protein. So the, the two ingredients mixed together helps give them a little bit more of a balanced ration than just the fruit. Um, so we use peanuts as one of our main protein sources for all of our hog feed. This one peanut mill that we work with generates 100 tons of this stuff per month as wastage. So we talk about the waste food what problem. They, what are they doing with the rest of it? There's other farmers that buy it. Uh, a lot of dairies actually will buy this stuff and, okay. and feed it to milk cows because it's real high energy. Okay. Um, we are the only hog farm that works with them though. So, wow, people are missing out, man. Yep, yeah, it's a good, uh, it's a good source of protein for sure. Oh, this is Steve. It's a, an acronym for um, simple transporter of everything vital for efficiency. <laughs> okay. So and this is for a pig, pig, pig net system. Yeah, we have a lot of pigs on pasture in nets. Mm -hmm. And so instead of having an extra set of nets at each group, which mm. you know, sometimes you'll see that, we have uh, eight extra nets that we use for the entire operation. So when we go to move a set, this is what goes out there. These nets are used mm. for the new paddock. Pigs move over, break down the old nets, they go on this, and then we can just take this from group to group instead of throwing them in the back of the truck or a yeah. gator and having them all jumbled up and messed up. And you forklift this. Yeah. And 
This is a rubber mallet. Yep. For when you we can't drive these by hand. Right. When that happens. Usually there'll be a steel hammer there, but it's a wall. What's in here? Can I look uh, in here? Sure. This is just extra stuff. The steel hammer would be right here. Yeah. So this is just the extra uh, fence repair packs that they send with okay. them. Some insulators. Not 100 percent water. <laughs> yeah, a pair of very wet pliers, but uh, they'll still work. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. You know what kind of net this is off bat? I know it's the Premier One, but. Um. So these are called the Quick Fence. Yeah. Called Quick Fence, which that should have the model number. This and stuff is the on 630. There. 12-SS for anybody wanting to. Do you like this this net or do that's you all wish we you had a different one? Nope, that's all we use. Uh, we also use this netting for turkeys. So this is the what? only, yep, it's the only premier netting that we use. <laughs> turkeys won't go over nope, that, I guess. They will not. Will the piglets stay in that? Um, if they are properly trained, they will. <laughs> uh, but we don't we don't wean pigs into this kind of stuff. Okay. We, we use a hard okay. hog panel for okay. our weaning pens. And then we'll transition them to a wire and then to nets. I like needed. It. Would you change anything about Steve or do you like that? It's pretty straightforward. Um, I might make a little bit more of a, um, a dish here to hold the nets in so they don't get tangled up in the forks of the tractor. Yeah. Um, but really it's something we threw together in an afternoon and it's worked really well for yeah. a couple of years now. The piglets are allowed to get out. <laughs> Holy moly, those are some pigs. This is one of our sow sets, and you can see they've got a bunch of babies with them that are anywhere from two to five weeks old right now. Um, and they've just started moving in their rotation again. Yeah. And when they farrow, we do have to stop for a few weeks because they don't want to leave their nests. For those that don't know, when you say farrow, that means birth. Have them give birth. Yeah, yeah. To have pigs. Some pigs, piglets are out even and getting this mm -hmm. snack over here. Yep. You have that set up on purpose. Yeah, so this is um, uh, you know, a small feeder. Um, we have it set up as a creep feeder um, in that it's outside of the sow's paddock. Uh -huh. and so the sows can't leave the area where the wire is, but the little pigs can go underneath the wire in and out as they please. So we can have them on a continual feed that they can start nibbling at. Okay, and, and you, ration, you ration the sows? Is um, that what you yeah. said? Mm -hmm. Okay, how much do you give them a day? When they're lactating like this, they're yeah. getting about 15 pounds a day. Each? Yep, okay. each. Uh, as and opposed that, to when they're dry, it's about four pounds. Is that 15 pounds of commercial grain or it's, nut, nut meal and peaches? It's a mixture of both. Peaches. Okay. So this is um, our regular round feed here that I'll okay. give them several buckets of, and then I'll give them some scoops okay. of that stuff okay. as well. So you're kind of considering or accounting for the weight of all that per pig in here? The weight of all your peaches and, and the, nut? For a lactating group, the peaches or apples is really just on top. Oh, it um, is. Their, their caloric need right now is so high Okay. Um, that we are still going to give them the amount of grain that we would as if okay. we didn't have the okay. fruit. Okay. And then the fruit's just on top of it just to give them extra milk to okay. help keep their body condition up. Where using the fruit and the peanuts helps us uh, reduce our costs is with okay. our gestating sows that are dry. That they don't need a lot. Um, but if they have four or five pounds of apples in their belly, that's a much happier mama pig than, than one with just a little bit of grain. Okay, that makes sense. Um, but for these guys, you know, when they're nursing, it's, that's not the time to be stingy no. with feed. You just dump it to them and, and let them uh, pig out. Okay. So this is uh, feed we mix ourselves. Um, it's about 25% each of corn, barley, uh, roasted soybeans and peanuts mm. and then we also use a swine mineral mix from fur trail nice. so it gives us about a 20 percent protein ration wow and that's what we use for our weaning pigs our lactating animals and our small uh growing growing pigs yeah so that's going right here for the piglets yep. all they can eat same thing in there and okay. the same thing for those big girls what, what happens when it rains to that grain that's why we only put a little bit in so okay it's about you know two days worth of eating, and if it gets wet, they'll eat it. We'll knock the rest out. It can and, still fall in because yeah. it could clog up if it got wet, huh? Right. That's why you can see there's basically just okay. enough to nibble okay. on today. Okay. Twenty-one sows in this group. If they're needing fifteen pounds of feed each, I mean, pushing three hundred pounds a feed a day so it's it adds up pretty quick <laughs> yeah how many sows you got in here there's 21 in this feed <laughs>
How are these feeders working out for you? Basically, ta track car tires yeah. attached to wooden. This is all we use for our sows because um, we got tired of using the you know Rubbermaid troughs that a big sow like this can break in an afternoon. Yeah. So, How big are these sows? Uh, they're probably 600 pounds. Five pounds. That's it for these ladies? That's it for this group. Okay. And we've got five more to go. What'd you think about those big old pigs? Sure. You wanna hop on my lap? I think he wants to drive this thing. Who are these guys? So this is a group of gilts. So these are all females that we are keeping as breeders and uh, boars are in with them right now. Um, they're about anywhere from two to four weeks bred. Um, so they're just kind of in early gestation and doing their thing. Where'd you learn all this, Jordan? So, you know, Polyface did pigs when I was there. Um, but they don't breed pigs. No, they don't breed. Uh, a lot of learning how to breed pigs. Um, one book I used when I started is called Dirt Hog. I think the guy's name is, um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna jumble his name, but you know, it's anywhere you buy books. Yeah. Um, the rest of it is just doing research, asking what other people were doing, and then eight years of trial and error. You know, just figuring out what works, what doesn't. Um, Have you figured it out? Uh, there's always something new to learn. How do you keep their water unfrozen in the winter? We don't use those. Okay, so we'll can, just use the trough, dump um, it out. Uh, actually invented a frost resistant Look at uh, you. water tank. <laughs> Look at you. Jordan, are you ready to write a book? Uh, I keep you getting feel that asked, confident? I keep getting asked to. It's about time right now. How, how long? I don't know. I think it's probably finding the time. Yeah. But you feel like you're ready. Um, I could throw something on paper and if people want to buy it, then uh, they'll, they'll tell me if it's ready. What would you call it? Um, uh, the first one would probably be called Farm Builder. Cool. Um, there's there's a real kind of movement in agriculture right now of veterans leaving the service and getting oh. into this type of farming. Okay. And looking for what's that next big mission that okay. they can tackle. All right. And uh, you know a lot of guys are drawn to this kind of regenerative agricultural area that there's a lot of issues that ag is confronting right now and that people are confronting as eaters mm. and uh it's it's a real draw um i think what's needed though are the fundamentals of how to do these enterprises at scale that okay. you know people try a lot of things they throw a lot of money around and then they're out of money soon whereas we've done that legwork over the last 10 years and made those mistakes and spent mm. <laughs> spent that money and have it dialed into the point where it's very simple systems. You know, it's the same fence pretty much everywhere. Um, it's the same feeders that we use everywhere. Um, so our, the, the, the real metric you look at with pigs, when you're comparing what we do to the industry is your cost per space. So in a, a commercial uh, sow barn where they have 2,200 sows in there, the cost per space is anywhere from five, $600 per sow. Um, we have that cost down to about 50. Nice. Is what it costs us to keep a sow on the farm. Cool. So, and that's, you know, that's just an in infrastructure. Both farms still have to have the equipment and the feed and all that, but that's just the amount of stuff you got to drop on some acreage to start doing pigs. This is entry for anyone. Yes. Or anyone for more people. This. Yeah. Okay. And it can frustrate the heck out of anyone too. Yeah. <laughs> and you were telling me earlier, you're a vet yourself. Excuse me. So they, they spit all the peach pits back out. Look at that. They know not to eat that, huh? No. Some of them will eat it, but for the most part, they just spit them out. You ever get a bonus peach tree growing? Yep. And that's probably the number one question that we get uh, when I post pictures about <laughs> eating peaches is, aren't the pigs going to be poisoned by the pits? Oh. And th there's no issue with that. That's because they spit them out. A lot of them they're spitting out, yeah. Avocados, 
Yeah. Everything. Yep. They're they're you know a sophisticated eater in their own yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> sophisticated and pig in That's the same right. sentence. That's right. <laughs> they're the underappreciated animal. Yeah. As a vet, w wanting to give other vets opportunity to enter into this, what is the deal there? What's going on there? What um, I'm not a vet, so what do yeah. I not know that you know about the draw? Veteran, the veteran community, um, the, the great experience you take away from military service is you are acclimated to doing what it takes to get the mission done. You know, if it's 16 hour days, we'll do 16 hour days. But I think we also have a pretty high uh, BS meter that, you know, we've seen a bureaucracy, a massive bureaucracy in motion. And for a lot of us, that's something that we want to be as far away from as we, as we possibly can. Um, and I think the combination of those two things, a, a deep sense of mission and purpose, but also, hey, I'm, I'm the master here. You know, no, Sergeant Major didn't tell me what to do. CO didn't tell me what to do. Yeah. Um, it's, it's all on me. That notion appeals to a lot of veterans that they're not afraid of working hard. Um, they, they like the idea of being their own boss and getting after it. I think what we are doing and certainly want to do more of is giving them the tools and training of saying this is how we do it and you don't have to go out there and try to be a google warrior and figure it all out um you know you can come see how and what we're doing is catering towards commercial scale stuff you know this, this is if you want to have a commercial farm you're employing several people paying yourself full time you know this is your your deal um that's kind of our niche that we're that we're angling nice. for that sand dials up man Time's up in here, George. Yeah, yeah. We're going <laughs> so to uh, start coming to the tractor. The buffet, We've been here too long. The buffet is open a little too late today. <laughs> this is what the pigs create for the cows. Not bad, not bad. There's the sour gum. Sorghum. This your third set of sows. Yep. How many sets do you have? Uh, we have six right now. How many are you gonna have? Eight, probably. Is what we're what we're going for. And you're running in the next year. How many acres are they using? Um, they're on about 120 acres of range. So we we figured out that about two sows per acre is um not to use overuse the word, but a sustainable stocking okay. rate for right. for what the ground can take. How long will they be in this paddock? They are leaving tomorrow. How long were they here? Um, they've been here, what's tomorrow? Monday, uh, nine days. Okay. Yeah. Do you try to move them? Do you do um, the 12, 12 day? No, every seven rule? to nine days. So this paddock um, was overseeded already okay. two days ago. So if you look down in here, you'll see. Yeah, so the pigs some, don't eat the seed. Well, no, as you can see right here, like here's several barley seeds uh -huh. right in there that they've already pushed into the ground and, uh. and kind of stirred around. Um, we've found out that if you use anything bigger than sunflower seeds, they'll eat a lot of them. So if you go do it with corn, they're going to eat it all. But if it's something small like grass seed, barley, you know, tetracal, sorghum, any of that kind of stuff, they they can't lick it up. Or okay. what? the little bit that they do is inconsequent. So once they leave here... How long of a rest does it get? They won't be back here for probably four months. So this will be cool to talk about because this is our um, experimental silvopasture. Yeah, see, so this is, that's the long rest. Now you said how long? Six weeks? Um, no, it's been Six probably three months. Since three months, mm -hmm. 12 weeks. And that's, I can see stuff you've planted behind them coming up. Yeah, so there's some sorghum in here. There's also a lot of just volunteer stuff. Yeah. The real bushy um, stuff's called carpet weed. Yeah. and it just naturally comes up and then we've got some kind of minty type of stuff not sure what that is but they will in a week turn it from that into what you see yeah, here so what we see here that's seven you said seven days this nine is days? nine sorry days. If I don't. Mm -hmm. okay so this is nine days yep you've you've what you call it overseeded overseeded right and then that's what this is going to look like yeah in about a month um this grass will be you know ankle height coming wow. back up and then you know 12 okay but they'll be a little bit longer before they come back around because they'll farrow in between yep. now and then. Uh, so it'll probably be late fall when they come back around and it'll be yeah. knee-deep barley. 
Are, is your goal to, cl to, to, to clean out this canopy some, or do you yeah. care? Yeah, no, this is our long-term goal. That's your goal. That that's we're... ideal. That's, this makes you really, that's your happy place. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that was a three-week project in February where uh -huh. um, we had a rental uh, excavator in yep. there and cut out, we, you know, probably cut out 60, 70% of the junk trees that were in there. Yeah. And so what's left is black walnut, hickory, oak, um, a couple species of oak, you know, things that are going to drop nuts that the pigs can eat. And then tagging in what we do with the cows, this type of area, we can actually bring the cows yeah. through as well. Let's take a good look at that though. That's an older version of what I'm trying to do. That's an older version of what I'm doing with my forested pigs. See that? 70-ish percent pasture, 30 percent forest. That's an interesting way to protect the water. <laughs> Sow group number four. Number four. Yeah. We're gonna service all six tonight. Uh, yes, I think so. Okay. Yep. It does One rain. group's got to be in piglets. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've got another group that has piglets. Okay. To go besides that first one. Okay. Yeah, the first one. Yeah. Now these are our next ones due, so they're due okay. September 12th. Okay. Their uh, farrowing window opens. Real squirmish. That's why we don't take the pigs out to dinner. Is anybody else using your waters yet? Uh, maybe. I did make a, a video, put it on YouTube, showing how we did it. Oh, it's a do DIY. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anyone's tried it yet. But oh, you got a YouTube channel. Yeah, they're more than welcome to. Okay, what's your YouTube channel? It's called Farm Builder. Yay! Yeah. Farm Builder. Farm Builder. How often do you post? Uh, it depends. If it's the winter, I'll do something every week. Oh, nice. Um, this time of year, you might hear me once a month kind of thing. Okay, so. I didn't know about this, Jordan. We're all going to have to go check that out, Farm Builder on YouTube. Yeah. Good. So it's a lot of just how-to, um, you're doing this stuff more at a, a commercial scale um, that we're operating at, you know, butchering tutorials. Um, I think one of our most viewed videos is how to corral and load pastured pigs. You know, uh, we're getting like a group of 40. That would be good to see. I think I got to go check that out. Yeah. Yeah. about done here okay we're fighting a thunderstorm here we're gonna have to speed up less questions today more tomorrow uh, just so we can beat this rain if if we get chores done we can maybe go back and look at the the shelters for farrowing having piglets uh, let's not we'll do it tomorrow pig set number five getting the uh, the full ration Lactating pigs getting full ration because they have their piglets. Yeah, that's a lot of nursing when you're nursing 10 babies. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, you guys get all you can eat. You guys can't topple that thing. Do I see you working on your relationship with these pigs right now, just spoiling them a little bit? That's right. You, know, you gotta take the ladies out to the spa every now and then, <laughs> have a little mud mask, a little exfoliation. They love this. Pam pamper. Look how they sit still when you start spraying them. They love it, because they can't sweat. That's right. For those that don't know. Yeah. Yeah, pigs are very, they are more susceptible to heat than they are to cold. Do you have a shade in every paddock or not? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we have this whole tree line back there, which uh, we walk back there a little bit. Okay, so this, this net will keep the piglets in better? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with the hay bale? Is that left over from winter? Um, so these are junk hay. So again, something that is a waste product that a lot of guys who make hay have too much just have it sitting on the edge of the woods it's going bad after two years so we can come in and get it real cheap or if they're making hay and it gets rained on and ruined um, they're happy for us to come in and give them a salvage price on it and then we can use it for bedding for the pigs and by farrowing out here when the pigs leave the hay just stays and it will break down and help build soil wait a minute the 
the the mamas gave birth out here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> In the summer. Really cool. If it's um, you know if it's above a night temperature of about 40 degrees, we'll let them farrow in the woods or on the field. And so what we did here is we'll set some of these round bales out in different spots. Mm. And that way the sow can pick out whatever round bale she wants. She'll tear some of it apart and make a nest. Would there be any way to keep piglets in on pasture? Not unless you are using a very tight permanent fence. Okay. But that's the, the beauty of this system is we don't fence it. They will yeah. stay close to wherever their sow is. Yeah. As long as we farrow to the interior of the property, you know, they'll roam 50, 60 yards away from where the sows are, but it's not hurting anybody. No. Where is your market for so much pork? Uh, we move a lot at retail ourselves. With the piglets, there's, there's not, not many farms that I know of that are, that are doing a pastured-based um, pig, I guess, or you know, pasture-perfect pig at scale. So you know, if you're buying piglets, you can find six, eight somewhere, but you can't pick up the phone and get a hundred. And so okay. that's the market we're going after. Nice. Are these larger, um, you know, sometimes nationally known labels that are doing direct to retail, but they don't have a farrowing component. Okay. And so we're going to those farms and nice. saying, hey, you guys need 800 piglets a year. That's something that we can do. Nice. Let's I talk. like it. So right now we're we're sending people away. Really? Yeah. I mean, cool. People are already talking to us about. Um, oh boy. <laughs> yep. You know, one, two, three years down the road. Okay. A storm is right on us now. We're gonna right. get to see one more thing this evening, and then we're rained out. You ever ridden it? Drove a side by side? No, but. It's... Get back on the trail. I just got it, I'm pretty sure. Look, Jonah, the rainbow. It may have rained us out, but we get to see a beautiful rainbow like that. I think the gold's right there, Jonah, if you want to go get it. I think there's at least five million dollars there. At least. Maybe even more. Um, yeah. Okay, we're at the uh, we're at the Airbnb. Whoa, Jonah, we're at the rainbow, bro. I know. Look at that view too, man. What? So fun. Okay. Oh, shoot, I do have the key. What? Nice. Hey, we get a king bed together. Big king bed. Big living room in case we want a fire. They got the big screen TV going for us. They got a scythe. Deer head, nice living area. Ooh, a bathroom. Ooh, I like that. Look at this bathroom, Jonah. Ooh. Fancy, I like the wood. Sinks. Old school telephone. Old school telephone, old school telephone. What's that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Look at this little bar. Kitchen. American Idol. That show's still on. <laughs> Comforters. Jonah, we're gonna have a hard time getting up at 5.30. Okay. You know the secret to going to bed, getting up by 5.30? Getting up early! Early, early! I going get... to bed by uh, 9.30. What? Oh. That's the secret to getting up at 5.30. Going okay. to bed at 9.30. Sure, I go okay. to bed at 9.30. We're talking to everybody no, on FaceTime. Let's, let's sit down, let's, let's Look, sit guys. down. Look at the rainbow. Don't eat that. Don't eat that. Why? Because we're gonna, I'm making smoothies. Do you wanna have a smoothie? Did you guys get, did everybody get to see the rainbow? Look at the rainbow. Yeah. Nice oh, rainbow, okay. Who is it, Jonah? Jonah. We got our fried chicken. Uh, oh, yes, that was a good night sleeping that. How'd you sleep? Good. I did move a lot that because it's anything. Because I experienced that when we slept at the grandma's. Yeah, he did. He moved a lot. And slept right on me. <laughs> <laughs> gonna make some broth for the day for later in our thermoses. Gonna make some fried eggs from our farm and sausage. Wherever we go, our farm goes with us. You ready for the day? Yeah. More piglets this morning. All they face farms after that. We're gonna go look at their turkey go gobbler, I think they call it. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, get some inspiration for that for our turkey shawl and go home. You ready to go see some more pig stuff? We just did epic interview with him for an hour talking about breeding, breeds, farrowing. That was good, and that's going in permaculture pigs. Hey, why don't you choose the gator over it, the other side-by-sides? Um, we've had other brands, but we've gone with the gators because they are the simplest machine. Okay. Um, oh, pasture piglets. Two months old? Yeah, they're seven, nine weeks old, and uh, they were weaned off their sows last week, put out here in our weaning pen, and so they're, uh, you know, away from mom and exploring the uh, the party life together. Wow, that's crazy. They're only two months old right now, and you're going to harvest them at seven-ish months? Uh, about eight months. So okay. six months grow out from now till, okay. uh, till pork chop and bacon time. They're, they're, they're very timid right now. Yeah, but the sows they let you they handle them. Yeah, they're they're timid and curious, so they they want to come up and take a taste of the boots, but they're a little too scared to try to do that. Um, but if you sit down in here for a few minutes, they'll be chewing on your clothes and in, enjoying themselves. They're munching on the clover. That's bonus for them. Yep. And oh, is that there where they were last week? Yeah. So you, you can see what uh, a group of 60, 70 piglets can do in a week is they'll take it from this you know nice pasture and they will turn it into uh they'll take it down to the dirt and so just like we do with the sows we'll come in and overseed the paddock a couple oh. days before we move them and you know right now you can't see it but there is a bunch of seed in the dirt here and you know you come back a couple weeks from now and this will be back to grass like it never happened so they were right here a week ago they were right here three days ago three days yeah. okay um and this spot was about two weeks ago. Two weeks. We're seeing some action, some hot action right here. Yep. So some of it's starting to come back up. You know, it is August. It's hot and dry. So yeah. So might not get it uh, as fast. And do you run cows through here eventually or just yep. pigs? No, this is cow pasture. So oh, when okay. we bring the cows here, we'll just put a fence Neat. around the pigs to keep the cows off. And, okay. Um, you know, so you can see here and then further back there and up under the hill. It's going to look like this again. Yeah. This yeah. has been hit by pigs. Yeah, we've run That looks pigs. amazing. Uh, if you look right over here, this is some of the sorghum that was seeded in by a, a bigger group of feeder pigs that's up on the other side of the field right now. Okay. We're using the pasture as, you know, as a receptacle for all the nutrients that the pigs are putting down. We can also bring in the seeds and then, you know, they have that influence of the cows at the end where they're harvesting the forage because they are the best converter of, of forage into meat. So it's all, okay. you know, it's all working together in a, a symbiotic fashion. Sorghum. And cows just love it. This is candy to cows, yep. Uh, and this will get eight feet high um, if we let it. And this is a, a real high sugar forage for cows. So they'll come in and just mow this right down. Do they love it at eight feet high? They'll, they'll eat it at any height, yeah, <laughs> yep. So instead of having forage for your herbivores that's you know six inches, twelve inches high, by using the the pigs, we now can have eight feet worth of forage. Oh. So if you think about it, we we're getting a, a multiplier of our biomass per acre mm. by using the pigs. That we now have forage much higher for the the herbivores to harvest. Yeah, because you couldn't just go in a cow pasture and throw this down. Um, you need well, some disturbance first. Yeah, you, you need the disturbance. So either you're using a, uh, a drill okay. you know, behind your tractor and you're running it back and forth, grooming it and planting the seeds, or you use the pigs and we're just out here with a little hand spinner, just you know, broadcasting seed and they stir it in and okay. you know, what happens, happens. So for us, it's a we're using the pigs to be a, a planting tool and a tillage tool instead of having to spend a lot of money down at the equipment dealer. Nice, I like it. So the, the pig's breakdown plan is a lot more delicious than, uh, than a repair bill. <laughs> that one straight ahead. Yeah, and then come down in front of the house because we'll put all the feeders along the top. So we don't even worry about the little, the little piece up behind the house. Okay, it's intern Charles. Mr. Charles. Okay, 
Carl's he's gonna, the intern. He's gonna string trim a line for the fence, I imagine. Yeah. That's where they were moving these big old sows across the street over here. What's a typical day look like for you? Um, hours wise, this time of year we start at 6.30 in the morning with our little meeting just outlining what's going to happen for the day, do chores. That middle chunk of the day is available for movement, projects, whatever else we have going on. And typically we'll be done by 5.36 in the evening. So I mean we're, we're doing 12 hour days right now, but for us it feels pretty normal. Yes, you know, whatever your conditioning is. So it's the 16 hour days that suck. When are the 16 hour days? Uh, those, those would be days when we're butchering chickens, so we're starting earlier, maybe mm. going later. Uh, or if there's a, a staffing issue, you know, if a couple people are on vacation. Uh, we had something a couple weeks ago where one guy basically quit over the weekend, so we're missing a key player real fast. And so you know, everybody else has got to step up and get it done because animals still need to be fed, whether there's three people or one person here or 20 people. So go till it's done. You guys ready for this move? It's coming up. They're so ready for this move. I have a feeling they're just gonna walk right over. How are you gonna get these stragglers up here, down there with the other group? Yeah, we usually, we usually do have a few stragglers and we either just let them figure it out or we'll push them over. What's your name? Sarah. What's the best part about working here? being outside and at the end of the day just seeing the work you've done. There it comes. Oh, there it is. Get over here out of the way. You're the bold one. Right where you're supposed to go. <laughs> Oh, another breakout. They're just letting them take their time. Come on, you see your buddies over there, fresh grass. There you go, there you go, ladies. Just gotta be patient, don't you? Yep, patient. Don't panic. Because there they all go. We've got one here that won't go. Just one. All your buddies are over there. Go, them. Oh. Sometimes when you're moving across a road, they have something about a road that they don't like. <laughs> She's broke off in the woods. Understand it. All her buddies are over here in the forest. Okay, they got her back up towards the. While we're out here, though, they even seeding in the forest, and it's coming up nice. You gotta think it's her idea. There you go. There you go. They normally give you that good of a workout. Uh, every now and then. Um, with this particular one, we made a mistake that we had a cow fence laying on the ground that was in the weeds. We just didn't see it. But they see it and then when we cross a road it's always a little bit of a, a hang up they have about going across that kind of space but i'm pretty sure that particular sow she did the same exact thing last time we put them across the road so she's uh special she's getting marked she's uh looking delicious <laughs> more and more every day yeah <laughs> but everybody's across good so we're, we're good, good job go. button it up and they look happy we'll be done here all right jordan laura, laura. bye bye family Bye bye everyone. Nice Thanks for you. taking the total stranger in with the camera. Absolutely. Love okay. having you here and yeah. good luck with everything. Yeah, and people want to find out more about you. Where do they do? Sure. Um, on YouTube, Farm mm -hmm. Builder, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Look up Farm Builder. You can find our farm, JL Green Farm. Um, just hit us up on Google, Facebook, Instagram, okay. all those places. So all right. we're out in the digital spaces. Okay, we'll do it. You got right. to these days. Yes, sir. We'll see you. Proud right, we'll of what you're doing. All right, guys, do check out his stuff didn't know he had a youtube channel 
I'm gonna be checking that out. Let's go check it out. Let's give him some love. I think he said he's at 8,000 subscribers. Opens up the world to him on YouTube if he can get to 10,000. Can we get him 10,000 subscribers? Let's do that. Let's give him some love. Link to him down in the description. He's working hard out here. Oh, that would just that would just make his day. Let's do that. You ready to go? Hey, give us two packs. Okay, Polyface, here we come. Are there chickens? We are at Polyface now. Yes. We stocked up on some turkeys. We got a couple of turkeys from them. By the way, they're shipping now at Polyface Yum. Yes. So when I can't grow it, I know where to get it. Oh, we found Jonah. <laughs> Did you come here to, to, to bulldoze corn? Yeah. Okay. Gideon would love this. I know. Let's go see the gobbly go, I think they call it. Yeah. After a long walk, we found it. We're wanting to see this gobbly go and make one for Homestead, homestead scale, movable with just one person. Pretty much a turkey shawl. We're gonna make a turkey shawl, y'all. Secrets out. We need to get some inspiration. We need to take some measurements. All right, how are we gonna get over there, Jonah? Look at the size of that grit in that tub. These guys look like they're about ready. All right, here's a low spot, Jonah. You're gonna stay here? Yes, I can any of the canvas. Shade canvas. That's all they need. They don't need water protection, but they do need sun protection. Most of them are hanging out there, but you don't, you guys seem to be okay. You're out here. It's smoking hot right now, guys. Smoking hot. Okay, I'm going to say those perches are probably 10, 12 inches apart. All right, I'm going to get in there, measure it. All right, give me the camera a little bit. I don't want to scare anybody. Cause them to jump over the fence. Let's look at this thing. Just a shade canvas. Underneath. Rough wood. I believe there's 500 in this. And it's a 12 by 30 structure, something like that. We can do the math. Eight inches. Eight inches gap between perches. That's all I needed to know. I think we're gonna do this with a chick shawl. You're gonna get zapped. I can't watch. How's that? I didn't watch. <laughs> you couldn't watch? Mm -hmm. I got my inspiration. It's not gonna look exactly like that because I think we're gonna only count for maybe 20. Maybe, maybe raising 20 turkeys. So I believe if my math's right, we can do a four by four shade structure like that shade slash perch structure gonna build one for the soon because I want to use one for the guineas I wait to see your golden smile feel of a thousand kisses oh please stay a while I reach up to hold well, we made it safely back to the car rental return. Rebecca should be here any minute to. Jonah's gotta go to the bathroom for the third time. Just a moment. Okay. Can you wait till we get home? No. Till mom gets us and gets us home? No. Oh boy, we don't have any Sorry, I'm having trouble with the connection. 